Hello, YouTube. Today, let's talk a little bit about player prefs. Player prefs are the easiest and most basic, simple way of saving any data in Unity and loading it. I think it gets misused as well, so we'll talk about that in a brief moment, but I mean, you don't have to add any packages or really do much to get it going. So let's do a quick example. I have this input box right here, and I can put in any text I want, like, hello, YouTube, and I can click save. And so when I click save, right now, the player prefs is storing this in a key value pair, which I will show you in a second, and that's being stored in a file somewhere on your computer. Depending on the operating system you're using, this is where it's being saved. And so it's literally just creating a file at these locations and storing it on your computer. And you'll see here, it says Unity stores player prefs in a local registry without encryption. Do not use player prefs data to store sensitive data. So you probably shouldn't store any passwords or anything like that. But regardless, so what happened is I hit save and it just created a file somewhere on the computer. And so I can delete this now and I can hit load and you'll see that it actually gets that text right back. I could do that again and then hit delete and that should clear my player prep settings. And when I try and load now, well, nothing happens. And so that's a really basic example of how to use player preps. And I'll show you the code in just one second here. It's really quick. But I wanted to touch before we even get into any of that, that a lot of people use player preps kind of incorrectly. They use it to save all of their game data, right? Instead of creating a custom save load system, they'll actually just use this. And I think that's actually fine for things like game jams and prototypes and, you know, just like quick little small projects. It's not going to do you any harm. Um, but if you're making like an actual dedicated larger game, you probably should have a save load system. And by probably, I mean you should. Because player prefs is intended to be used not for all of your game data. I mean, it's called player preferences, right? And so its main use is really for like player settings, like things that would be in an options menu is what player preference is good at. But if you already create a custom save system, you might as well put the options in there. And some of the reasons for that is it's kind of limited in what it can do. You can only save three value types, which I'll show us in a second again. And in my opinion, it's not really robust enough to handle what you'll need in a larger size game. It's not really what it was intended for when it was created, um, but it can be used technically. Like you can make it work. I think you'll have more trouble that way. But anyway, let's talk about how you actually set it up now. Let's actually get into the code because it's really, really quick. Okay, so I have this scene here. I basically just have a canvas with an input field and three buttons, a save, load, and delete button. That's it. And on my canvas, I just put the save system example script. We'll open it up. Uh, and we'll rewrite it from scratch. The only thing different here is at the top, I have using text mesh pro because that's the input field I used. I didn't use the default one. All right, so let's talk about what we'll need here. We need a reference to my text mesh pro input field that I'll call it input field, but this isn't really relevant to player preps. Um, and then let's say we had a public void save data method. So how do we save something with player preps? Well, we can simply type player prefs dot and you'll see if we type in set there's three types of things you can set you can set a float you can set a string and you can set an integer and that's it so if there's things you want to store in here that it's larger than this you'll have to break it down into these three data types and so this is some of the limitations i was talking about before and so to actually save something in your player preps it's very similar to a dictionary or a hash map um, you basically have a key and a value, right? So I could open this up for set string and I could say for our key, I could set this to something like input, okay? And then for the value we actually wanna store at this key, we could put in our input field dot text. So whatever the user puts in that input field. Um, but this key could really be anything, right? I could call this like player health or something like high score or you know, blah, 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 whatever you want. Like it doesn't matter. It's gonna do a quick search for anything that matches this key and just take any value that's stored there. It's really simple. And you can also overwrite your keys, right? So here I have input as the key and whatever's in that text box as the value. But what I could do here is leave the key as input and then make the text something like, hello. And now regardless of whatever I put in that input field, hello is actually what's going to be returned anytime you access this key, right? Makes sense. So it's, it's very, very simple. And this is done with strings. So this could be the same thing. You might say set float and you might say player 
max health or something, right? And then you might put in like 100F, whatever you want. So same for any settings, like volume settings, or you could set up resolutions, etc. So that's really how you save stuff. And then getting stuff's even simpler than that. So let's make another method here, public void load data. So I'll say player prefs dot get. And you'll see we have the three things here. We have get float, get int, get string. Same deal as setting it, right? The same data types. So since we're setting a string for the input, we'll do get string. And you'll notice when we open our parentheses, we have to pass in a string key. In our case, the key would be input. There we go. But this is just gonna read that value back. If we wanted to actually set the text box to that, or let's say you are getting player health, you'd have to actually store that in your variable. So in this case, we have a reference to our input field. So we could say input field dot text is equal to, you know, get string at the key of input. And then finally we have our delete function. So we could say delete data. And then there's two options here. We could say player prefs dot delete key, right? And here you have to pass in a specific key. So in our case, it has been input. Or what you can do is say player prefs dot delete all. And this will just delete every single key value pair you have in your player prefs. And then I'm just gonna wire it up really fast. So the save button, right, we have this on-click event. We go to our save system example script and we save data for load. We do the same thing, but go to load data and delete button. Well, guess what, we're gonna delete data. Doesn't really matter. This is just for my really simple, stupid example. Um, but the interesting thing about player prefs, right, is because it's being saved in a file on a computer somewhere, is that it doesn't matter if you change scenes, it doesn't matter if you quit the game, it doesn't matter if you stop playing in the editor. I could type in this text box like this is a test and hit save, right? And now I could stop running the game. I could close Unity. I could close my game altogether. I could restart my computer. It doesn't matter. Once I come back and play again, I can hit load and you see it generates right away because it's reading at a file that's being saved in a predetermined location that you know player prefs just defaults to. And so the only way to ever clear this thing is to actually call that delete function. And at that point when you delete it and you try and load, well, it's gone. And I'll share this document in the description down below, but here's all the different methods you can basically do with your player prefs that they give you. So as you can see, it has good utility, but it's pretty limited in scope. So I hope this taught you a little bit about player prefs. They're useful for quick things or saving a high score or again, like options menu type stuff. I think that's like its intended purpose. But I'm gonna show you guys in follow-up tutorials, you know, a more sophisticated save load system that you can apply to whatever type of game you're making. I rarely use player prefs, only again in like game jams or like short little things. I just wanna test something quick. So like the video if this helped you out. I got one more thing to show you guys. All right, so really quick, the last thing I wanted to show you is if you actually type in BMO channel in player prefs and you save that, when you try to load, well, then it tells you to subscribe. So you should click that button quick. See ya.